Good evening, YouTube. So today, we're going to bring you an adventure. This adventure is going to consist of a couple days of diving that we are going to be taking the metal detector out. Um, I will be accompanied by a couple other fellow divers that are using the Vibratech metal detectors, and I will be uh, using the Garrett C100 <laughs> Mark II metal detector, you know, so... <laughs> Why are you doing um, dog abuse? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're ruining this. I'm trying to yeah, you record a serious video. Yeah, Anyways, we have, a couple, dog. we have a couple of videos of diving that we're consolidating into one video. And we'll do a wrap-up at the end. So uh, uh, please enjoy the video and subscribe and all that other stuff. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Uh, cut. <laughs>
here's our finds today. Susan, my wife, has done taking close ups. See how rude she is to me? So, a bunch of little medicine bottles. And some condiment bottles, soda bottle, brass lead. Got excited when I saw this, it was just a brass ring, not even real. Got a stir stick. Uh, got a couple of bones. I think they're chicken bones. I don't think they're human, but I want to get a better look at them on the surface. So I'm pretty sure this is a chicken bone. So. Grave robber. <laughs> Grave robber, yep. Um, this depression glass looking stir stick thing. A little lead and stuff. And Greg's got, uh, explain your, your finds, Greg. Nothing to explain. So he's got some teacups, medicine bottles, these are always fun. The glasses, uh, little cream bottles. I, you know, I dug a couple of these up. I don't know what they're to. Yeah, I don't know what the hell those are. It feels like an engine or some bullshit. This is a Listerine bottle. It's kind of cool. Milk bottle. Um, this is a cool liquor bottle. Um, it's before, maybe, I think it might be before the Prohibition. I can't, nope, nope, there's the Prohibition marking on it right there. Yeah, it's a twist top. But there's the Prohibition writing on it, and this is a cool design. Never seen one of those before. Got a little reel, old fishing pole reel. So, yep, I'll clean these up and I'll do another video of the ones I found. We'll get them all clean up, let them soak in vinegar for a couple weeks. Thanks. Silver. Spoon. And my cute little tiny bottles. They are super cute. They're awesome. Those are my best ones right there. That yeah, one, that one. one. What is this one? The Panama Silver. Mm -hmm. I have a brush. Do you need a brush in here? <laughs> or hit your kids with it? It works. So what I got was like a little more metal detecting. I found a couple bottles right off the bat, these two, and then I couldn't see shit because the visibility was just terrible today. But so I did metal detecting. This is a housing off of a light and I just pulled out some brass and lead. When I was digging for this, I was had my little uh, gardening trowel and I felt something scratching and I thought it was a bottle and then I felt it was smooth like a bottle. So I pulled it out, and it's a box, and I don't know what's, uh, what it was meant for, though, but there's a couple metal little tray things in there, and this is all garbage. I don't know. So we'll just clean it up and figure out. But uh, other than that, a couple little methyl Alita bottle, maybe a lip balm bottle, some other stuff. A little medicine bottle. So we'll clean these up and take some before and after pictures. So, Jeanne found a couple coins, but um, she put in my bag, but I couldn't see. I don't know what happened. So maybe they didn't make it in the bag or she was an arc, who knows. They probably got lost down there. All right, thank you. So that's a couple days worth of diving and here's the bottles all cleaned up the best we could. We basically had the bottles soaking in vinegar for a couple weeks to help break down the barnacles and help clean them up and all the stuff that was inside of them and everything. Um, they're not entirely perfectly clean, but they're a lot better and more presentable and they won't have that stink of the barnacles and all the other stuff that was, you know, uh, living on them or inside of them. Uh, the first two bottles we'll talk about were these guys right here. And these guys were found with corks in them still. and. I have found bottles before with corks in them, but what I've noticed is after the bottle, you clean them out a little bit and you put them in your display case, the corks tend to dry out and shrink and will fall inside the bottle. Um, but it's still kind of interesting uh, having the corks in them. Uh, one of my friends who was diving uh, with us, we noticed that they had a bottle with a cork in it and the liquid was uh, looked very clean and clear, untainted by the ocean. So they actually got a medicine bottle with the contents still trapped inside, I believe. Um, so these two bottles, this clear one, Chamberlain's bottle, and this one that's got kind of a green tint to it, is a, a Pinex trademark bottle. These, the research that I've done on these ones, these both are uh, a cough syrup bottle of sorts. So it's kind of interesting seeing those.
this other one, this Miles Laboratories Incorporated, which has also kind of got a kind of a green tint to it. Um, this was founded by Dr. Miles Medica Medical Company in uh, Indiana back in 1884. Not saying that this bottle itself is, is from 1884, but um, kind of interesting, the research we've done on, on some of these bottles. Um, if, if you know, if you see something out of this little lot that you know exactly what the date is or you know what that bottle is meant for or anything, even if it's to correct what I'm finding online, please leave a comment because it's always good to learn about some of these bottles. You know, I'm, I'm not a bottle expert, but diving for relics, you find a lot of bottles. So, of, of course, this is how we're going to learn about, you know, trying to communicate with other, other people who know uh, about this, you know, kind of bottle hunting history. Um, some of these little bottles right here, I've always found different variations of these bottles, and um, I have probably at least over a dozen of these at home. We found five of them on, on these uh, last two days of diving, but I'm noticing, so there, there's uh, a three single eye, three double eye, and three triple eye, and they're all kind of a cork or glass bottle top kind of bottle. Some of them have a measurement on the side. Some of them don't. Um, there are, I see like an Owens, Illinois marking on some of them. Um, I see this one has the Owens, Illinois marking on it. Um, so again, I'd have to do some research to, to date these. Um, but uh, I'm, I always find different little variations of, the, of these ones. They're still always pretty cool to find. They're neat little bottles. They're tough. They're thick, so they tan. They tend to withstand a lot of um, the damage of being on the ocean floor. Uh, let's see. This green thing was a, like a stir stick, and the end of it was broken off. Uh, never found anything like this before. My experience of finding something green like this was depression glass, and. Um, this one is kind of interesting. Never found anything like this before. Uh, so that's the first one for me. We did end up getting a couple mentholatum bottles. And we got one cobalt blue one. And one of the milky white looking ones. And this one's so clean because it was buried, you know, using the metal detector. You're digging through all this metallic metal garbage. And you always come across some bottles. So, so it's kind of neat how this one, you know, got submerged pretty right away before it grew barnacles on it and stuff and it's pretty clean so this one on the other hand had small barnacles growing and inside and outside but uh, still kind of cool finding those it's pretty hard finding cobalt blue bottles I always get excited about that so this one right here this dauber looking one this is wild root and you can see it's got kind of a little design of a plant growing and it says wild root and um, so the research that I've done on this one was basically when people go to the barber get a haircut, they dab some of this on their hair or whatever, slick it back. I don't, I don't know the entirely the whole truth behind it, but um, that's just what I came up with. Like I said, if you guys have found bottles like these and, and you've done more extensive research, please send a comment or anything. I'd, I'd be glad to read it and, and look it up as well. Uh, there's a couple more little daubers we end up pulling out of the water. Um, these ones, just a little bit of a design, not much, nothing really uh, on the bottle. No description really other than the little designs I got. Uh, let's see. So this, this box right here, when I got a pretty good signal and I was digging, you can see some scratches on it. And I, I, when I felt it with my hand, when I knew I was scratching something flat, and I was like, okay, maybe it, maybe it's a bottle. So when I pulled it out, you know, thinking the object was in there, I was like, oh no, this is the object itself that the metal detector was hitting on. And I was like, that's really cool because the first thing you you think of when you find a box is like, oh, maybe there's maybe there's coins in it, you know. And back then, the silver coins or copper coins, or whatever. So or is it a jewelry box? You know, who knows? So when I, I was quite surprised that the hinges still worked on it. So the hinges and the pins are also brass. 
and all I found was just these two little trays. I have no idea. I've never found anything like that before. I'm actually quite impressed that the hinges still work because this thing is probably 100 years old. Um, but I don't see anything written on it. You know, I don't think I'm going to let it soak in vinegar anymore. Probably just leave it as is, but it's just a brass box with just these two little trays that are in there. You know, I was kind of hoping it was full of coins. You know, I guess I can never get that lucky. Uh, we ended up pulling out a couple more of uh, these um, kind of milky bottles. This one looks like it's kind of a maybe a lip gloss of some sort. This one's a, like a cream one. This one right here, uh, Ponds, this one was an interesting one to research. This one was also a cream one. If, uh, let's see, Ponds Vanishing Cream. And I'll include like a little thing that I found online on this, this, this guy, because this was kind of interesting. I don't know what the date of it is. I guess Ponds is still around, but, um, I'll include a little clip of what I found online on this on this vanishing cream. Quite interesting. Um, found a couple other little bottles, you know, with a cork top. Um, not really, not really sure, you know, just probably medicine bottles, you know, held held more medicine in it, you know. Not really sure exactly what the hell. Got a, one of these before. Um, different shapes. It looks like it could be like a vanilla extract bottle. It's got a screw, screw cap. I'm not really sure. It's got this design, and I found a couple other different sizes of this. But you can see where the paper label sat on the front of it. Still pretty, pretty interesting. Not really sure what it held. Here's a jar. It's got crushu, crushing salts, crushing salts on the bottom of it. Nothing on it. Must have had a paper label. I found a couple of these before, and I think I have a couple in my collection. Um, I found more, but I haven't been picking them up. But the only reason I picked this one up was. I was digging down for uh, a metal object and I saw the top of this as I was digging the hole and I, and I was like, oh, it's a bottle. And so when I pulled it out, instead of kind of identifying to see if I wanted to keep it or why I just threw it in the bag, so it's mine now, I guess. So it's on the bottom, it's got Made in USA. On the side, it's got for half bottle poured until you hit the line right here. And on the side, it's got their Certo registered U.S. patent off. So I'll have to do a little bit of research on this one. Um, pulled out an ordinary soda or beer bottle. I kind of wish I had a design on it. Um, I would I probably would have normally left that in the water. This one I probably would have left in the water as well. Like a, like a kind of a ketchup, uh, old school ketchup bottle. Uh, this one, this is probably a first for me as well. So you can see how like this had maybe a big cork top or something. Um, it's got 24, it's got eight, 24, and then four on the bottom. Haven't seen anything like this before, but um, I was like, oh, okay, this would be interesting. So I know the wife's probably gonna turn it into a vase or something, but uh, figure bring that one back so that's pretty much it for this uh, collection like I said if you guys see anything out of what we found in the last two days of diving and you know a better description on it or uh, you know more of the history on it please leave a comment and uh, thank you for watching and please hit subscribe and like and uh, we'll try to bring you some more videos of uh, the diving adventures. So that concludes another uh, dive from Cooper's uh, antics and shenanigans. So hope to see you out there again. Thanks.